What's happening everybody, Brendan here, Dad Planet. Welcome back to the One Man Show. I don't know if you can hear the birds in the background, but that is such a lovely sound. I know I'm getting off track already. At any rate, we're gonna finish out the month of June. So this is what sold on eBay video covers June 22nd through the 30th, the last nine day period of the month. I'm gonna show you exactly what I did in sales for that week, featuring 15 bolos that I sold. I'm also gonna show you how I fared for the entire month in terms of sales. And I spent $1,221 in cost of goods to get there. And in this video, not only am I gonna show you a very large item that I sold towards the end, I'm gonna show you how to ship it. It's never as difficult as it might seem. So I'm interested to get that to you. Let's get moving. All right, what are we looking at here? June 22nd through the 30th. So for this nine day period, just over 3,500 in gross sales, amazing numbers, and just over 2,300 in net. My selling costs coming down a little bit from 30% at 288, and my average sales price went through the roof at $68. This was a phenomenal nine day period of sales on a very slow month for me. So from the first through the 30th, you can see I had a very, very, very slow middle of the month and I finished strong. 9,700 in, in gross sales just over 6,300 in net. My average sales price per item at $56 and then my selling costs are usually always hovering around 30%. Slower month, usually July is a little bit slow like that for me. It has really picked up in July as you guys will see in my next What's Sold on eBay video. But for now, I have 15 items that I really wanna feature for you. Let's get into them. All right, so we're gonna start this off with a $238 sale, which on the surface looks amazing, but this was a really bad buy for me. I purchased this online in an online auction and I was taking the chance, usually when these auction houses post pictures, less is more for them. And so there's a lot left kind of to the imagination. And so this was looked like an open box item that they were selling. And I was taking the chance that all of the items inside were still there and accounted for. The remote was still wrapped, so it looked sealed. If this had been brand new, which I thought it might be, I could have sold it between four and 500. But when I got it home, it was missing the CD and it was missing one of the cords. So unfortunately, I couldn't sell it brand new, which is the risk that I was taking. As it stands, I had it listed for around 270 or so, and I took an offer of 238. This buyer is 277.04 all in. It's a Bose Sound Touch 20, but I paid $161 after fees. So my return on this item was only $25. It's 10%. So if you're judging me based on like the stock market returns, the S&P 500, 10% is right in line. But when we're talking about purchasing pre-owned items or in the instance where I thought this might be a new item to resell on eBay, that's not a great return. As it stands, I will take it because it moved quickly. And sometimes that's just the name of the game. You got to take some risks. If you were not aware that this is a bolo item, an item to be on the lookout for, when you're searching thrift stores or you're at garage sales, put it on your radar because it's an easy seller. So it's the Great Adventures Medieval Castle from Fisher Price. It's from 1994. And I sold this thing to a first time buyer and it shipped out to California. When somebody wants something bad enough, they will pay. I'm in Ohio, so shipping was expensive for them but it was an item they had to have. It was complete as the castle goes. It didn't have any figures with it, but sold it for a hundred bucks. This buyer is 160.08 all in, and it only cost me $4.99. This did take four months to sell. It's still a pretty quick seller because I had it priced on the higher end, but I will take it, great sale. I went to a garage sale and I purchased a set of clubs. They were left-handed clubs. They were rocket balls, tailor-made. I sold the set for 375, those shipped overseas. And then I parted out the bag. This is the bag, super light bags here from TaylorMade. They are a bolo. There's not a ton of them online and they're very light. Even though it was only a four-way divider, I thought I could get $100 for it and that's exactly what it sold for. So this buyer is $129.59 all in. I paid 75 bucks for both the clubs and the bag. So that was a pretty good sale when you add it up uh, all together. And this only took six days to sell. Golf is still selling. Golf is an evergreen niche, but of course in the summer is usually when the stuff is selling the fastest. So velocity and volume is peaking right now. Um, so still keep your eye out for golf related items. I am still looking for them. It will taper off here in a little bit naturally, but again, this stuff sells year round. So keep your eye out for it. Hey, who knew Tommy Bahama chairs were a bolo, right? So this is like a backpack chair. Like you can strap it over your shoulders and walk around with it if you are so inclined physically. Um, it's a five position chair. It's got like the wood armrests, so I thought that was cool. And the pattern on this, through doing my research, it looked like a unique pattern. Now, I don't know if this unique pattern 
had anything to do with the actual sale, but it was priced properly at a Goodwill and I picked it up and it eventually did sell. So it sold for $55. The buyer is $117.63 all in because I think it was over $50 just to get this shipped and it only cost me $5.99. So I sourced this like around February, March. So it took about three months to sell, but Tommy Bahama chairs are a bolo. So if you're not afraid to ship large items and yeah, I kind of had to Franken box one of the items. It started to look a little bit weird, but it got there safely. Everybody's happy. This was a good sale. If you're willing to ship the larger items, look for these Tommy Bahama backpack chairs because they're a great seller. Patagonia is one of those brands that will sell year round no matter what. So this is obviously a pair of ski pants. They are the powder bowl pants and uh, they sold in June. What can I tell you? So I had these listed for 130 and I took an offer of $100. I paid $20 for these on Marketplace and they moved relatively quickly so I can't complain. This buyer is $140.97 all in. They only took six weeks to sell. I source Patagonia year round. I sell Patagonia year round, even the snow stuff. So we're like Sorel boots. Those don't sell as quickly or move as fast during the summer months. I feel like Patagonia tops, bottoms, whatever. They sell pretty consistently uh, even in the summer months. So keep your eye out for even the snow gear from Patagonia. This was an interesting item. I don't know if Premier the, as a brand still exists. Like maybe they were purchased by Pet Safe or Pet Smart or Pet Safe. Pet Smart is the only one that is making an item like this right now. So this is called the Manners Minder. It's a dog reward training system, right? Pops treats out of it. It's a really cool item and I found it at a garage sale. So I only paid $10 for this and I had it listed for $100, but uh, somebody accepted an offer of $85. So this buyer is $105.53 all in, and uh, it only took five weeks to sell. That's dog training is another one of those kind of evergreen niches where it sells consistently year round. People are fanatical about their pets. And so I thought it was just a matter of time, even though the comparables weren't all that great for this item. But as it stands, it sold, sold relatively quickly. And this was like one of those really unique finds that I love finding at garage sales. Happy to source it, happy to sell it, happy to move it. All right, we got another garage sale find here. I paid $60 for a Canon camera and lenses and bags. And then I, I parted out this Canon lens. So EF 75-300 had both caps and this buyer received it, has already used it and already left positive feedback. I had it listed for 90 and I took an offer of $80. So this buyer is 97.10 all in again. I think I sold the camera and the goods for 180 and then I sold this for 80 as well. So total let it up 260 on a $60 spend at a garage sale. Camera equipment, usually people know what they have when they're selling it. So it was not like I could talk this guy down to $20. And uh, I knew what I had and he knew what he had and he was happy to, to move it at the price he moved it at. So I'm glad to have picked this up because it was a little bit of a slower month for me. So I will take it. This was an interesting pickup for me. So there's a warmer on the bottom, right? And then you have the mug and it just like, it's a smart mug. It's supposed to keep your drink warm. It's from Ember and it is the mug too. It's temperature controlled. The interesting thing about my listing here is like, if you look at the comparable sales, you'll see them selling in like the 30 or 40 or maybe even $50 range, but mine had a cap on it. And I thought that was interesting. All of the comps that I saw, they didn't have like that top little lid. I don't know if it's not included, because it doesn't look like the lid is included brand new when you're purchasing this, like sealed in the package. But for whatever reason, this one had a lid. And so I priced it at $75 thinking, oh, maybe there's somebody out there that will pay a premium based on having this extra piece. And maybe that had a hand in it. As it stands, I had it listed for 75. That's what it sold for. This buyer is 95.36 all in. It only cost me $3.99 at a Goodwill uh, and it took two weeks to sell. So it's a very quick seller, even without the lid, ladies and gentlemen, at four bucks, you should still be picking this up because the sales velocity on this is very good. This is an item that is in demand. It's a bona fide bolo, something that everybody should be on the lookout for. So keep your eye out for it. If you've been following me for any length of time, you saw that in one of my thrift run videos, I sourced this Blendtec blender, but when I was plugging it into the wall, I wasn't getting any reception of any kind. It wouldn't turn on, it wouldn't turn off. Well, when I got home and retested it, the thing worked perfect. So maybe when I was in store, it was just a bad outlet problem. I don't know how that happened because in the area that I found it in, in the store, there were other outlets there and it looked like it had been plugged in by somebody else. I don't know what was going on that day, but this thing worked perfect. So I was going to part it out and just sell maybe the base for one price and the blender pitcher and the lid and the blade separately, but I didn't have to because it worked perfect. I put video in my description of it working just to reassure the buyer that everything was good and everything would be good when they received the item. And I sold it for $125.
So this buyer is 205.34 all in. It only cost me $5.99 and it only took five days to sell. Vitamix blenders, great sellers. Blendtec, you'll get a slightly lower amount for Blendtec blenders, relatively speaking, than you will Vitamix, but they're still excellent sellers. I mean, at six bucks, what can I say? This is amazing. Guitar Hero guitars, these things still sell so unbelievably well. All right, so I have an Xbox 360 guitar here. The model number, and I always put this model number in my title, 95905.805. There are different iterations based on the different guitars, but I always put it in my title because I think it's important and I want the person that's using that as a keyword to land on my listing. So maybe that's something that you guys could do as well. As it stands, I had this listed for 70 and it sold for $70. The buyer is $89.76 all in. It only cost me a couple dollars because I sourced it at the Goodwill bins. And I also cleaned out the battery component. It was corroded. For those of you that have never seen that done before, I will link the video where I sourced this in the description of this video so that you can watch it. And I encourage you to watch that video all the way through. There were a lot of good finds in it, but I show you how to clean the battery compartment out of these. It's very, very simple, and it will help you revive some that look like they might not work where I got this and opened it up. It was extremely corroded, cleaned it out, got the thing to work and sold it for full price. So hopefully when you watch that video, you'll learn how to do that. And you can bring some of these guitars back to life that you might be seeing in stores that look like they can't be cleaned or they can't be fixed. They definitely can. All right, this is the second pair of Jabode pants that I have sold. I didn't use the keyword Y2K in my description. I probably should have or in my title, but I sold a pair for over $100 a few months ago. And then I had this pair listed for $100, but I did take an offer of 60 bucks. What can I tell you? Slow month. These would have sold for $100 had I waited long enough. They were in fantastic condition. I'm pretty sure that I got both pairs at the Goodwill bins. So this buyer is $78.75 all in. Let's call it 2 to $3 and they only took two months to sell. So, Gerbode, Y2K, Bolos, keywords that you should be using in your descriptions. I just sold a Y2K pair of Gap Leather Pants. You guys will see that in an upcoming What's Sold video. But Gerbode Pants, look for them, especially all of that stuff from the 2000 era is starting to see a resurgence, both in interest and in price. So keep your eye out for Gerbode Pants and everything else from the year 2000. Nothing special here, Yamaha receiver. I paid $15 for this at a Goodwill. Sold it for full price, 200 bucks. It's RX-V481. Nice that it came with the remote. Actually, I had this in my cart and then one of the cart pushers came out and noticed that I had it in my cart and then brought me the remote. So shout out to you for doing that because it had been in the back and they recognized that it went with this receiver. So I think that's why I was able to get $200 for it because it did come with the matching remote. So this buyer is $233.45 all in and it only took me five days to sell. Very fast seller. Keep your eye out for this. If you're not afraid to ship larger, sort of heavier items, receivers are great. The electronics category is the number one category on eBay in terms of sales. You really do have to look for these items because a lot of times the stores don't want to deal with it. They'll price them at 10 bucks and they just, they want to get them out there big and bulky and heavy to them and kind of cumbersome and space is finite in their area. So um, if you're willing to take a stab on it, you could turn 10, 10, $20 into 200 like I did. I am 100% not familiar with Vera Bradley. I think they're pretty, but it's not my wheelhouse. So this was the Heather Paisley pattern. It was a really nice bag. The condition was phenomenal. I think this was in one of my thrift haul videos. I don't know, I'm getting old. But I had it listed for 45 and I sold it for 38.24. So this buyer is 56.53 all in. It only cost me $5.99. The Heather Paisley pattern, I don't know if purple has anything to do with it, but it appeared as though to the unsuspecting eye that this pattern was still very popular for Vera Bradley. So when I was doing my research in store, I was like, I think this is one that you can probably take a chance on. There's a lady that I see at the Goodwill bins that she picks up every Vera Bradley piece she can find. And so there must be something to that, right? If a brand I'm not familiar with, but I'm taking that into account. I'm looking at the sold comparables for like the Heather Paisley pattern. It's all adding up and it added up to a wonderful sale. This was a very, very quick seller. It only took 10 days to sell. So keep your eye out for this pattern from Vera Bradley. You guys have heard me say that I buy by brand before I buy by style, probably because my style is so plain and simple and I just don't recognize what's in and what's not in. At any rate, this pair of boots is from Fry and the sold comparables were not good, but I bought them because that's a solid brand. The shoe was a solid shoe 
and I felt like it was just a matter of time before somebody picked these up and I really can't believe how fast they sold. So I priced them at $60. I took an offer of 50 really quickly and that's what they sold for us. There's a, the style on this is Oliver. They're obviously a chuck -a boot, um, men's size 10 and the buyer is 76.33 all in, which is amazing. They cost me $4.89. But the fact that they only sold in five days boggles my mind because there are plenty of other Oliver style boots and shoes from Fry that are still sitting there and mine for whatever reason sold. So maybe it was good pictures, maybe it was a fair price. I don't really know and I can't really assess why exactly they sold as fast as they did, but I am happy that they are gone because I fully expected this to be a fall seller, but they're gone, I'll take it. This last one is way out of my wheelhouse. Now I've learned a little bit along the way here, but again, I've always said this is the beauty of selling online and having sold app data to go on from the eBay app is you can really just kind of learn on the spot. So I bought this at a rummage sale for five bucks. It's a Fenwick Fairlight fishing rod. The model number is FF705. This came with a protective tube and it looked like it was in mint condition, not knowing anything else about fishing. I did a little bit of research after the fact and kind of learned about, you know, Fenwick and the desirability of the models based on the years that they were built and the serial numbers involved. And it didn't really take that much. So uh, I had this listed for $175 and I sold it for $148.74. This buyer is $180.69 all in. Again, only five bucks and only four days to sell. This is the second Fenwick that I've sold. I found both of them at that rummage sale. 15 bolos in the books. I hope you enjoyed those. I'm gonna show you guys how I shipped that tube really quickly. So I've got a couple of 12 by eight by 10 boxes here. I think it took five total. And I'm just gonna stack them together and only bubble wrap the ends of the tube. It's a good protective case. So everything inside is protected really well. So I'm just only using a very small amount of bubble wrap, but I will, once you look inside the box, put it on a diagonal right here. And then I will shove a little bit of bubble wrap in the middle just to prevent any kind of shifting inside the box. Even though if it does, I'm really not concerned about that. And just tape the box and uh, cap it off and put the label on it. It's really simple. Even though it looks like there's a ton of room there, it's just the easiest way to ship them. It's not very difficult at all. And that's it. That's how that get, thing gets shipped. Got some bonus footage here. Uh, I couldn't really fit this in another video, but I found a print that I, I like here. So this is Pike Place Market. They only want five bucks for it. I think Pike Place, this is like over a hundred years old in Seattle, Washington. You know, the fishmongers is what they're famous for. This was an interesting piece and it's probably long tail. This is like the 20th anniversary right here. Um, I think it goes about 24 inches by 24 inches, but they only want five bucks for it. And I'm gonna try to get 150 for this. I really, really like it. And it's a pretty unique one of a kind piece. So that's an interesting piece there. I wanted to share that with you at the end. All right, hope you enjoyed that one. Brendan here, Dad Planet, The One Man Show. Thank you so much for tuning in. Smash that like button if you liked what you saw or you learned something today. And then always consider becoming a member of the Dad Planet family by subscribing and hitting the bell notification icon so that you know every single time I upload a video to YouTube. That's it. That's all I have for you. Reminding you to stop and smell the roses every now and then in your life and in your business. I hope you have a great one. I'll see you in the next video.